You finally found the perfect car in racing blue. You even got them to throw in the LED fog lights for free. Auto Owners insures your car because some people never learn to parallel park. That's simple human sense. Keep going, more. No, no! Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Red Raider Coaches Show, uh, the 2023 uh, Athletic School Year Edition. With me, uh, Brent Johnson, your host, along with Offensive Coordinator uh, Matt Wilson and Defensive Coordinator Thad Williams. A little shake-up. Um, don't have the head coach here today, and due to some scheduling issues, uh, that's, the, that's the main issue, is why we won't see maybe quite as much as Coach Mark, uh, coach Mark Wilson this year as we have in the past, but we're going to have these guys, uh, along with maybe some other assistant coaches along the way, um, to give their insight on Red Raider football uh, as we move throughout this season. Coaches, how you doing? Good, good. Yeah, I can, I can tell you all excited to be here. Thanks yeah. for having us. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I think this is the first time maybe they've done a at least a, a video uh, coaches show, so this is kind of, it'll be fun for them. Um, I told them before we got started, I, I get nervous a little bit. I was trying to remember how I was going to introduce them and the show and everybody else. So, so here we go. First things first, we need to make sure we thank all the sponsors that, that make this possible, um, and most of them come from uh, the Red Raider Touchdown Club. Um, I, there's, the list is too long. Uh, we'll sh I'll show them on some of the advertisements along with the show. Um, but I do want to point out one particular uh, sponsorship who is the title sponsor for our broadcasts all season long and have been for the last 10 years, and that's Bennett Bennett & Johnson, Mr. Daniel Johnson. I want to thank him and his dad. Uh, David for being a part of our broadcast uh, and being the title sponsor for the Red Raider football season. All right, guys, um, we're going to start off by, you know, some people probably in the stands that will be watching this show, they see you going up and down the sidelines and, um, and know your name uh, maybe, but they don't know much about you. So I'll just start with Coach Thad here. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from, college, coaching experience, that sort of thing? Uh, Thad Williams uh, from ADL, Georgia. Cook, Cook County High School and uh, went to the University of Tennessee at Martin. We just played Georgia this past weekend. Um, kind of bad weekend for me. Um, but been coaching for nine nine years. Uh, started here at Bacon County. Um, then I went to Taylor County with Coach Coach Mark Wilson. Uh, then, I, then I went on to Appling County for, for three years. And then I resided here at the offensive court. I'm a defensive coordinator. Defensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, been coaching DBs uh, my whole coaching career, and finally got the chance to be a coordinator here at Big County. That's awesome. All right, tell them a little bit about your family as well. Uh, I got a wife, uh, a wife Justice. Tell them how you got of your wife. Oh, oh, Brett helped me out at the bank. And, uh, <laughs> True story. And, and he put a he put a good word in for me. So, I did. Uh, I got lucky with that one. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> like most of us. He outpunted his coverage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. And, uh, I got a son, uh, Jeremiah. Uh, he came from Cook, you know, to play with me, number nine. Um, I got a daughter, uh, Trinity Williams, she, uh, from Tennessee. And I, and I also got an addition to the family, uh, Aiden Cawthon, so uh, number 10. So yeah. uh, that's my family, and, and you know, we, 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 we bleed red and black. And we get it. And we get it. <laughs> I appreciate that, guys. Matt Willis. My turn. Okay, I'm Matt Wilson, and first off, where I'm from, I'm a coach's son. So when people ask me that, I just tell them I'm from Georgia. I've always been in Georgia, but I've gone everywhere. I've been North Georgia, Middle Georgia, and South Georgia. So the the place I stayed the most was Americus. So I kind of tell people I'm from Americus, Georgia, and that's kind of where that's where my my wife's in-laws live there. So we kind of visit there. Um, so I'm from Georgia. That's what I tell people. All right, and then uh, we in 2014. Came here to Bacon County. It was my first coaching job. Me and my wife moved here. And I'll be honest with you, Brent, we didn't know anybody. There's no ties to Alma, Georgia here. We didn't know anybody. But I'll be honest, when we came here, the community community in Bacon County took us in like we was one of their own. And I promise you, since from day one, me and my wife, Nicole, have loved it here. And that's just the bottom line. Yeah, yeah he took us in our like we're family. And that's how we, that's how we, that's how, now this is where I'm from. Be honest with you, I've told people that before, just because how the community is, and I, we love it here. 
So that was 2014. We moved. We was here for three years. Then I moved, I went to Taylor with my dad, who's the head coach now. I went there, and I was actually defensive coordinator there for five, six years. And then, like I said, I came back, and that and that's really the only reason. Me and my wife, it was a hard decision. Now, and that's coaching with my dad, which shouldn't be a hard decision. Right. We bear. We really didn't want to leave here. That's the only way I would be able to coach with my dad because I didn't know how much long we'd have. Right. So that's the only reason. And thank God, and I really think God works in crazy ways. He does. Because he brought us, he brought us right back here. And now we have uh, Landon, who is five, mm -hmm. and Luca, who is two, about to be three. So we came back with some little ones, and I promise you, I thank God because I want my I want my kids to grow up in this community because of how how we've been treated. And I'm, I'm so glad my, my five-year-old, he started pre-K, so he's at the primary school with my wife, who's a kindergarten teacher, so that's good. And uh, Luca goes to New Vision. I drop him off every morning, and, and we just love it here. And I really think it's a it's a godsend that we're back here. So. Well, I've heard a lot of people say that, and, and certainly wouldn't be surprised. It, it, God works in mysterious ways for all of us. You know, how sometimes we, we're not sure why things, especially in coaching, Exactly. You know, you it's uh, you, you just never know. Literally, from year to year, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, your your jobs are depending on for, uh, depended on by 14, 15, 16, 7 year old kids. <laughs> you know, in the community, you know, is is uh, yeah, but but when you have a community like ours and um, like you said, and I and I, I do, we're not perfect. I've lived here all my life, um, but it is a is a pretty cool place, uh, a nice place to raise a it raise is. a family. It is, um, and to make a make a living, and, and hopefully we can keep you guys here as, yes. as long as we can. Yes, and um, but again, that's just part of coaching, yeah. uh, part of the business side of it. Well, guys, I appreciate that introduction. Yes, sir. Uh, that was awesome. So y'all should be settled in. No, no more nerves <laughs> now. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, you know the difference between last year. Last year was their first year for this. Uh, this coaching staff, uh, Coach Mark Wilson, the head coach, which is Matt's dad, who came in and, and kept a few guys, and then he brought in some guys. Obviously, he brought in some guys that had been here before, so they were kind of familiar with uh, our school system a little bit and, and kind of, you know, the facilities and that sort of thing. But uh, from, from year one, you're, you're trying to implement things, you know, uh, a philosophy. Um, sometimes you're trying to change a culture. And that's probably the most difficult pro uh, process, and we'll we'll discuss that in a minute. But weights program, and it, you know, you know, you, you you most of the time your philosophy differs from one head coach to the next, uh, depending on what type of style of offense or style of defense, the kind the kind of kids you're working with, the size of the kids, the strength of the kids, the the uh, athletic ability. So tell me a little bit about um, from a defensive perspective and then an offensive perspective, or as a whole. Um, the philosophy uh, and, and, and the culture and, and those types of things, how they progressed from when you got here to where we're at now. Okay. Um, first off, I can go, I'm going to go ahead and because I'm in the weight room with them. And in the, in the off season, from year one to nine, in the off season, we, we went to work. I'll be honest with you. We, we preach being in the weight room, being there every day, being consistent. And, we, and them boys work really hard. And as you can see already this year, it's paying off because we don't. Because I'll be honest, the first year we got pushed around a little bit. Yeah. This year, can't nobody, nobody can push us around. Now we went to let Apple know they wasn't pushing us around, and they're a bigger school, and they, you know, they're real good, real good team, and we shouldn't, we're not going to get pushed around this year. And that was what we wanted, and they, they bought in, and they're stronger now, and we're stronger now, and now we can, we can, we'll be in every game just because we don't get pushed around. That's football. Yeah, that's right. That's football, and they bought in. And and we're we're real proud of them for that, and they see it now. You know, you can't tell to the and now they see. Okay, yeah, the weight room matters. So I'm in. I'm I'm lucky to be in the weight room with them, and I love. And you know, I love it, and we get after it, and we have a good time, and uh, and it, it it pays off. Well, it's not just football. I've noticed over the course of the last uh, this really since we've been at the new school, um, all sports benefits from the weight room because we have baseball, yes. softball girls. Uh, I mean, every every sport, track, you know, from they're, uh, and they're, you know, these, the coaches are tailoring these workouts to help benefit their sport, um, uh, whether it's agility or athleticism or just brute strength, you know, just getting stronger on that line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important for that. It's good to see that because um, mm -hmm. I've I've been here for 15 years and I've I've been here at times when I don't think the weight room maybe was a priority um, mm -hmm. or their philosophy was a little different. Uh, it just made us a little bit weaker, so um, that's good to see. So the weight room is one thing. Um, so have you seen uh, maybe a difference between our, our guys' mentality and, and uh, from last year to this year with your uh, 
with y'all's uh, system, maybe, uh, that you put in? I can, I can honestly say that uh, from year one to year two, I think our culture is just changing. Um, we kind of live by uh, on defense is attacking the day. You know, we're not worried about what happened before we go on the field. You know, let those problems go. But when we go on that field, we're attacking the day. We're attacking that period. We're attacking. We always got something that we're aiming for. And I think that's a difference. Uh, last year, like I said, we was filling those guys out, you know, filling them out. And this year, I feel like we got everybody in the right place. And uh, just want to shout out to my, my defensive coaching staff, man, D-line coach, uh, Coach Beach, great guy. Um, he, he works those guys hard. Coach Wilder, uh, linebackers, he, I'm always listening to those guys. They always give me good input. So it start with those leaders, mm -hmm. you know, our, 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 our position coaches. And, and those guys work their butt off, man. I can't, I can't thank them enough. And, and the kids just follow along. You know, the kids just follow along. Um, funny thing is that, you know, with my son out there, you know, I try not to say too many words. I try to let Coach Wilder kind of get on to him. Right. Because I kind of do it too much at the house. You know, yeah. so, um, but but we're changing as a, our mentality. And, and that's what I think the biggest jump from year one to year two is. We, be, we start to believe. Yeah, like that happened. We yeah. was was really big for it us. Was. Yeah, it was really big for us, yeah. and, and we're starting to believe. Yeah, and I think as we keep going week by week, yeah. we gonna we gonna we gonna change some heads. You well, know? I, and I, I got proof in the pudding. You know, we went over to App and man, we were fired up. And nobody gave us a, a prayer to yeah. play with them, yeah. much yeah. less do anything else. Yeah. Um, but uh, our boys, they come out like we were ready to whip the world, yeah. and and you could tell, and then. Unfortunately, the next week we didn't quite show up like I think we all of us expected, yeah. even coaches. But again, it's boys, it's nerves, it's, it's a lot of factors that goes into that. But here's the proof in the put: the next week, the preparation that you guys did, I mean, we saw. I'm getting chills just thinking about <laughs> the difference I saw in just the aura, just the the feeling before the game during warm up and at kickoff, and when we went to Screven and did what we did there, and just basically dominated that team mm -hmm. um, from start to finish. It wasn't perfect. We had some things we still got to clean up, but um, that's the culture change that I, I think you're uh, you're talking about. Um, it could have went downhill from there, mm -hmm. but it didn't. I mean, it was a complete turnaround, and our community saw it, um, and everybody that watched uh, on the broadcast saw it, and, it, you know, and it's uh, – so – I appreciate that. You know, I, I know what you know, what you're saying is is obviously true because of that that change that we saw in, in seven days or six days from that Saturday uh, till the next uh, Friday night in Scriven. And to pick it back off of that, the Scriven coach actually they talked coach he talked to Coach Wilson after the game. He said, hey, "Coach, your boy, and this is a this is the compliment here. Your boys played hard, played really hard, and they were they had nothing but class on that field. Yeah. And that's one of the best compliments that you, as a coach as we can get." He said, Coach, they want no bad mouth, they want no talking. Y'all boys got after it, got back in the huddle, and went on to the next play. And that's the big as, – as coaches, another coach saying, hey, Coach, y'all boys had class, straight class. Yeah. Classy team, played hard, got after it, got back in the huddle, and went to the next whistle. There's no better compliment than that for us. Absolutely. That's what we're, we're trying to teach them. In life, You got that's how you got to be. If you want to be successful, you can't – and they're, and, they're, and another word, coachable. They are way from year one to now. They are so much more coachable. They can, you can tell them, you can yell at them now, and they don't go in the hole. They read. They say yes, sir, and they get back after. It. And that's that's a huge difference. So now, and that's just I just wanted I wanted to mention that that coach did say we had a lot of class, and that's the biggest compliment for our boys. Well, I appreciate you mentioning that, and that's win or lose <clears throat> yes. when you play with class yes. because you can be winning like we were most of the game and not show class. You could have been mm -hmm. huffing and puffing and. Pointing and shouting when you knock a guy down and talking over him and all this other stuff. I've seen that from uh, in the unfortunately in the past here, but I've seen it much in other schools. I've seen it more often than not. Uh, much less when you're you know you're losing, and that's the hardest time when it went to, to keep your composure. Um, but uh, but I do appreciate that guy saying that, and that, that does say a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so that that's definitely important. So we're seeing that culture shift. Uh, kids are being like this coachable. They they. Well, you know, they're still. They, you were feeling them out. Well, guess what? They were feeling you out too to see how serious you were. To see if you were, if you, you meant what you said. That if he, they told you something, you were going to stand by it, um, and they realize you are. So when you do get on them, yes, they sir. understand that that they they, they want you. Uh, 
it. You want them to do it for their, their own good, for and the good of themselves and the team itself. And as coaches, another plus for us is we're going to coach them hard and we're going to love them harder. That's right. And 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 that's from year one, year two. They, they're still filling us out. And I'm, I know the boys now know that we love them. And and that's and they'll play harder for you, and that's and they know that we'll do anything for them. Well, and now that they know that, that's that's another culture type change right, that we've, that's we've right. got. You know, it's a <clears throat> ages. Uh, I, I, I would dare to say that the average age of our coaches on this staff is younger than maybe we've ever had on average, um, and that can be a double edged sword to where the the boys don't maybe look at you the same, they don't quite respect you like they would maybe looking at your dad who's got a few more gray hair like me, um, and, and those types of things. Um, but it, I think it can be a wonderful thing because they can relate to you more. Mm -hmm. So there is a respect, but there's also a relationship that you can build with them that, that I could, or maybe your dad could, mm -hmm. because of that, uh, that generational gap. So um, it seems like y'all are taking advantage of that, and, and I certainly appreciate it. I know the community sees it as well. Um, the interactions with you guys on the sideline, um, and y'all are fired up, and they're fired up. And that's what we like to see. We want, you know, we'd like to see that, uh, that coaching going on, and, and not just the coaching, but the building up and uh, patting them on the butt and, and on the helmets and those sorts of things, just, just, just keeping them going. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to shift gears uh, right into – we already mentioned Scriven just a little bit. Uh, I've already said how, uh, man, what a, what a turnaround uh, from a mental state, a physical state, I mean, we, we dominated the lines of scrimmage was was unbelievable. You just mentioned that, um, and we and we really didn't get pushed around that the the, the Lanier game. Uh, we just didn't execute very well. But from scrimmage from start to finish, man, uh, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. It could, you know, it could begin barring some some things we need to clean up, penalties, this, that, and the other. Um, but we were really impressive um, at scrimmage. What what were some of the things that you took defensively from that scrimmage County game that you were very proud of? Um, I think I think we, we we learned from that 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 Applin to Lanier week about being complacent. Um, I think that going to that scrambling game, we had a different mindset in the game, and and I know that you know we had to work as a unit. We were striving to to go for a shutout, and and we were that close, and and we almost had it. But um, I think that we are working. More and more each week to to work for the shutout. That that's my that's my thing to my position group guys. Are we working for a shutout? And that scrimmage we get we did it. We we did. We just we, we, was, we was almost there. Um, but we made strides from the Lanier week. You know the Lanier week from to scrimmage week we made strides. And and that's what I'm more proud of. Uh, man, those those guys worked their butt off, man, that week. Um, and 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 it ain't been a normal week for us now. You know, we have been having some hiccups here and there. We had to adjust practice schedule and all that. So those guys are doing a great job of adjusting. Yeah. And 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 I think that that's what I'm I like more about this team. Also, man, we ain't had a all summer no regular field or nothing like that. You know. So so these guys are learning. You know, they're learning life lessons, and, and that's what I'm more proud of. But going into that scrimmage week, we just wanted to play. We wanted to get that 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 ale out of our out of our mouth, and, yep. and we wanted to just play. I just wanted to play hard, and they did. Uh, we almost got the shutout. That's what I wanted. Um, but those guys played hard. Coaches did a great job. Yeah, did, did a great job subbing guys in, trying to keep guys fresh, and, and and we stuck to the game plan. Yeah, gave up a couple of big plays, but um, I just know that we, we we never we never panicked, and, right. and and that's what I said at the end of the game. Guys, I'm proud of y'all. You didn't panic when when things weren't going our way. We just kept playing. We just kept playing, and I think that that's the biggest difference. And, and we just we just got to keep progressing, and that's what I want. That's what I want. I just want to keep progressing for us to be one of the top defenses in our in our bracket. So we just keep doing that. We go we gonna make plays. We yeah. gonna turn some heads. Yeah. People gonna start noticing Bacon County. Yeah. Well, you know everything you said. It, it, that's what I observed when we were calling that game, watching it. Um, first first couple things I noticed was how our, our lines uh, dominated. And the second thing I observed, especially on even on just that first three and out that we that we got, um, just guys flying around yeah. and making tackles. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and wrapping people up, uh, wasn't missing tackles, and just making plays and attacking. You said yeah. attack the day, attack the moment. You yeah. know, attack each play, and that's that's what we did. And um, and again, that was it was just an amazing uh, 
turn not say a turnaround, but just how how the difference in the mentality from our from our kids mm -hmm. on the field that we saw. Um, from a defensive standpoint. So what, what offensively? Okay, offensively, we changed our offense this year. Last year we were more of a one back, one back only. He was just getting it every time. And we, we realized in the offseason we got we got a few guys that can run the ball, a few guys that can catch and stuff. So we went to the – it's called the gun T system. It's a it's a combination of the spread and wing T. And and this – and when we, we bought the system, we put it in ever since the spring. And they said, hey, you got to give it time. You just got to give it time because there's a lot of intricacies. It's a, it's a combination of two two different offenses, but once you get it, yeah, you do it. So you can see from Lanier for uh, Scrabbing, mm -hmm. it clicked. Yeah, and, and and you can see it just started click. It finally clicked on. They said it just takes time, and finally, y'all can see we ex exploded a little bit, and we was able to do a lot of stuff. We could throw in run. That's right. And we got it to a lot of different people. A lot of different people got the ball. So. Um, we were, we're not so now you know now the belief now is like, okay yeah we just had to let it just had to let it process and I don't know if people realize on, on offense we got one senior. I'm I, I did that. not know that yeah. so I'm sure got, most, yeah. most people okay so yeah I don't know we're like, we're pretty young on yeah. offense still. that's a good problem so it is <laughs> and then and we got three sophomores starting on the O line mm -hmm. which is the hardest thing on offense to get mm -hmm. and that's three sophomores mm -hmm. so that stuff takes time too and finally it's starting and now it's starting to click yeah so. Um, just offensively, we just got to keep keep pushing and be and execute. Offensive, just executions. Right. We know who to by Friday. We know who to block yeah. for the most part. It's just can't. Are we going to do it right? Are we going to step right? Are we going to keep our hands? Or, you know, do that stuff. So it's just execution, and we're just getting better and better. Yeah. Well, and then that's that's a that's a day to day process, yeah, right? It is. Minute drill by drill. Um, and we, we know that we see that, and, and the, once the kids uh, kids get it. You know, they give their best effort every time, whether it's at practice, they're going to do the same thing, uh, duplicate that on a Friday night. And that's what we saw at Scriven. And if you went to the game, that's great. If you watched it uh, online, that was that's awesome too. But again, um, that was a big, big, big turnaround. Now, we've got a little gap in the action. You know, we had uh, Adelia, I think was her name, that come through uh, last week that uh, caused some problems. We was going to try our, tried our best to get that Berrien County game in. Um, but unfortunately, that storm caused a little bit more havoc in their area than in ours, um, and we just couldn't make that, that match up and that work. So we've had about two weeks uh, in between and, and some crazy practices and walkthroughs because of the weather and transportation and all this other stuff. So again, the season has started off a little, a little weird, um, but hopefully uh, this Friday night we're going to travel over to Atkinson County, uh, to Pearson, Georgia, to play Atco. Uh, they're the Rebels? Yes. Rebels, yes. yes. Uh, another red team. Um, the, that we'll be uh, playing against, and uh, you know we, we've been over there uh, quite a few times, um, and I, I'm looking forward to going back. And uh, uh, you know it, it seems like it's a hit and miss sometimes with them as well. They, they uh, it depends on which which players they get from Coffee County you know, <laughs> as to how as to how maybe good they're, they're going to be or the the possibilities of their team. But uh, I, I know nothing about uh, at coast. Maybe you can give us a little insight on that, but. From a, a defensive standpoint, and you know, how we're looking uh, to attack uh, at Coast. Well, you know they got some great players. Uh, they got some great athletes that can hurt you out in space. Uh, got a big, big full back that can really hurt you. So uh, we are committed to stopping the run. And I know Coach Jones. I played for him while he was at Cook, their head coach. And I know he's gonna run the ball. Yeah. You know, so uh, we committed to stopping the run and 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 not giving up no deep passes. So um, that's our game plan. We we want to stop the run. We gonna. Do everything in our power to stop the run. I don't care if we got to put ten guys on the line scrimmage. We gonna stop the run. All right. Uh, and I, and those guys they practice hard this week. Like right? they've been flying around to the ball. I was really surprised of our Tuesday practice. That's our most physical practice. Okay. And those guys showed up. And those guys they they met my expectations of that practice. And um and I think it was one of our best Tuesday practice so far this year. That's great. Uh, just just physical. Just physical. Getting to the ball. Uh, committed to stopping the run. They just executed the game plan that we that we've implemented so far. So um, that's what we plan to do. We try to stop that run, uh, make them throw it. And yeah. I think our DBs have have stepped up have. this year um, mm -hmm. from you know good receivers we've been facing the past few weeks. So um, we we we're gonna step up to the challenge. We're gonna stop the run. That's our main objective: stop the run, make them throw it on us, and uh, hopefully don't give up no deep no deep balls. And we're aiming for a shutout. You know that that's our goal. Uh, the yeah, main thing this week was let's work for the shutout. So okay. that's what we're aiming for on defense. Offensively, what we're looking at? Their defense philosophy is the same. He said they're going to try to stop us running the ball. 
they like to stack the box too. And they just gonna put two on our two receivers. And they say you gonna, we're gonna try to stop you running it. Well, we gonna run the ball. <laughs> so <laughs> right. um, they do. They'll give us different looks as far as the shades and stuff. So our linemen and Coach Coley, the offensive line coach, does a great job. They we we've gone over every different thing they can give us. So as long as the line, you know, execute, same the offense, just execution. We know where they're going to line up. It's just, you know, it starts with the O-line, and then after that we can run it, and then the run sets up the pass. Yeah. So they're just going to try to stop it. They got some good play. He, same, they play a lot of both ways, and them same, that same running back, fullback, they're playing wow. defense. Yeah. Yeah, and they're and they're good, and they they like Smash Mouth. I'll yeah. be honest, they like to they like to, they're gonna try to push us around, and we better we should better not let them. So not that's, that's, what the weight, that's what a weight room. That's what a weight room. But they're gonna they, and they they are physical, yeah. so we're gonna have to bring it. There's no there's no doubt about it. We better we better bring our A game. Well, well we we hope to do that every Friday night. Um, and and guys, I appreciate you showing up this morning, um, so we could record this, so we can provide it for our community, and. Um, this is our first show of the year. We we're a couple of weeks late, and again, due to part of that's my fault with schedule and just just crazy stuff going on. Um, but again, I look to, to have these guys back on the show along with maybe a couple other of their position coaches can join them uh, from time to time, so you can inter- we can introduce them as well and get to know them. Um, you know, as a as a community, as individuals, as men um, that are trying to again. Uh, be an example to these guys on and off the field, and that's what I appreciate the most about this this young group of coaches that we have. I think they do a, a, a good job of that. Um, but again, we thank you for joining us on this edition of the the, the coaches show. We will be traveling again to Atco tomorrow night. This afternoon, um, if you're watching this video this afternoon, the JV will be uh, traveling over to Osceola. We had to cancel. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Cancel the JV <laughs> game. I have to go on and uh, they were going to broadcast that as well. They they do the NFHS as well with the. Uh, AI camera. Uh, so the we'll JV- back the data. We're gonna get it in. Okay, we'll try to get the game in, um, but it's gonna be rescheduled. Real so. quick, Brent, can I say something to the community? The community, yeah. as far as the football team support, it, it couldn't get no better. We appreciate all the support y'all give us, and I promise these boys work so hard; they deserve everything. And that's all we're trying to do: give our boys the best, the best possible, anything, yeah. everything. So the, to the community, we appreciate the support. And uh, we're going to try, we always try to, we give you our best. Coaches, player, we're going to try to give you our best tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, and that's what we want, want you to travel over. And we'll be broadcasting. They're going to let us come and do it. But I've always, I want people there in the stands. And you can watch our, our, our game later, uh, listen to the commentation and all that good stuff. But we want you there supporting uh, not only the football players, but, the, man, the band does a great job, uh, Mr. Garrett and his crew. Uh, and then the, the cheerleaders, we want to support them as well, who support, uh, both of those support the football program. And like he said, uh, community, we, we certainly appreciate everything that you do uh, from a broadcasting standpoint, from supporting the, uh, the Red Raider Touchdown Club and the money that goes to help um, provide all sorts of things um, uh, for, these, for these young men. Um, and we certainly appreciate it. So, again, don't forget, tomorrow night, 7.30 uh, p.m., uh, Pierce, just a short drive, 25 minutes, uh, through the woods over there. Take a left in Nichols anyway. So uh, we encourage you to come out and support these Red Raiders and support this coaching staff as um, we continue into the 2023 football season.